Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. To get the most out of this video, I suggest listening to the report while you're cleaning or exercising, maybe creating something or driving down the road. Listen to the intro so that you know what's going to affect you and when it's going to happen in the week ahead. Lastly, use the timestamps in the description to go to your rising sign, sun sign and moon sign in order to learn how things will affect you personally. It's important that I point out that this reading is a general read. If you are after something specific and want to know more about how it's going to affect you at a very personal level, then I would suggest getting a reading from a professional astrologer such as myself. You can go to my website and book a reading there with me, or there are many other professional astrologers out there who can help you understand how the planets are going to affect you at a deep level. This read is a general read, I just reiterate that. I'd like to send a special welcome to anyone who is new to astrology here. You can learn to read your own astrology chart through my short course and the link is in the description below. It's very cheap and it's lots of fun. To all my friends who like and share my videos and anyone new who wants to subscribe here, I love you all. And to my gold and silver and bronze star Patreon family, I pray for you every day. If you would like to join the Guiding Star family, the link is in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's go to this week's Spotlight. So welcome Patreon family to the full moon in Scorpio video and whew, what a full moon it's going to be. Take a deep breath. Hang on to that roller coaster railing and away we go. This could really be a bumpy ride. You've got to expect the unexpected with this one. Don't be surprised to see power struggles unfolding between old hierarchies, old ways of doing things, the old order of things and the new that wants to come in and emerge. And this happens on a collective level or could happen on a collective level, but could also, will also happen at a very personal level for us as well. When we get to the ceremonial energies that we're going to talk about, the rituals that we can do to support us during this um, full moon, we want to keep in mind that we're going to need to be very careful because these energies in the sign of Scorpio are very, very potent. So I just want to say that right from the outset with this. Because of the combinations involved in this full moon, the things we energetically work on can manifest for us very, very quickly but they may not turn out to be 100% as we expect them to be. So we'll get to the, the energies that we're working with uh, shortly. But first, what about the dates? Now you'll find that the dates for this full moon are listed in the description box below. I'll read through them very quickly for you, but if you want to refer to them, um, down, they're down there. So Melbourne, the full moon in Scorpio, it's a super moon as well, I need to point out also is happening at 1.31 p.m. on the 27th of April. In New Delhi at 9.01 a.m. on the 27th of April. In Johannesburg at 5.31 a.m. on the 27th of April. In London at 4.31 a.m. on the 27th of April. And then in New York at 11.31 p.m. on the 26th of April. And if you're in Los Angeles or around that area at 8.31 p.m. on the 26th of April will also be the full moon for you. So let's take a look at this full moon's chart so we can get a picture in our head of what's going on. Well, here is the moon here in Scorpio making a direct opposition, as is every full moon, to the sun at 7 degrees of Taurus. Now, while the sun is there, as you can see, at seven degrees of Taurus, it's in a conjunction with Uranus 
And we've also got um, Neptune and Mercury. They're about 10 degrees away from the sun. So that's not actually considered to be a conjunction, but it's close enough to be kind of involved as well. So we can see that there's a lot of planets conglomerating in Taurus at the moment that will be feeding into this full moon. So not only that, but this is a very potent full moon because these planets will be squaring Saturn, not to the exact degree, but close enough to be influenced. And Saturn will also be squaring the moon, the full moon itself. So the full moon's occurring at seven degrees and Saturn's at 12 degrees. So it's definitely within orb and something that will be felt by this particular full moon. Pluto is also doing something rather important, even though it's not sort of in orb or aspecting significantly any of these full moon connections. Pluto is turning retrograde only a few hours after we have the full moon. So let me just put a big R there next to Pluto because that's going to be important to note as well. We'll talk about Pluto turning retrograde very briefly because it's not super tied into the aspects to the full moon, as I said, but it is a part of what is happening on this day. So it's important to note um, the, sh the shift in energy that it's going to bring. It'll be most felt, the Pluto retrograde motion will be most felt by cardinal signs. So if you have the sun, the moon or your rising sign in Capricorn, Leo, sorry, Capricorn, Cancer, um, Libra or Aries, you will feel uh, Pluto's retrograde turn more uh, strongly than other signs may. So let's spend a, bit, a moment or two just exploring the influences of this day, uh, that I've, the dates that I've given you, through these particular transits that are occurring. We've got a sun conjuncting, it's not to the exact degree, but it's within, uh, it's three degrees away um, from Uranus. So that is definitely a part of this full moon, a very important part, bringing sudden changes, sudden manifestations, sudden shifts in our life. Um, around this full moon. So this sun conjunction to Uranus can bring a lot of excitement, maybe a feeling of rebellion, like I want to break free, I want to be liberated from the restrictive circumstances in my life. Um, there's a wanting to change that is going to be very predominant as a part of this full moon because of the conjunction um, of the sun with Uranus. And there may also be a rise in our consciousness as a collective and individually because of this conjunction as well. Uranus wants to raise our mental vibration and the sun being, um, you know, the, the star we're all circling around has that very important role individually as well for our individuation. And both planets are highly individual planets. So there is this desire to break free from things that are not helping our consciousness to rise um, with this. Plus we've got the moon opposite Uranus. Now the moon goes opposite Uranus once a month. This is not an unusual occurrence. However, this moon is a full moon. It's at its full capacity, its full energetic state in opposition to Uranus. This can bring relationship turmoil under this full moon because of its opposition to Uranus, where we feel like we're out of control with relationship circumstances that we are in. So that could be, you know, anything that's intimacy. I mean, the moon is in Scorpio. Scorpio is a highly intimate so, um, sign. It is, it, it's connected to the eighth house and the eighth house is one of the relational houses. In fact, to my mind, I feel that the eighth house has far more deep impacts on relationship than the seventh house. The seventh house is the contract you sign, the commitment that you make. But the eighth house and Scorpio energy is very much about the intimacy, the connection, the bond, the union that you feel between somebody, uh, between you and somebody else. So it goes beyond the seventh house stuff, which is business partnerships, you know, and, and contractual connections, marriage certificates and stuff. It goes beyond that and it takes it to that very intimate realm, which does not include usually business partnerships, which does not include relationships with clients and what have you. The eighth house is exclusively when we're talking relational stuff, the, the realm of that deep intimate bond and the sexual union and that sort of feeling of oneness with our partner. 
So I've gone off on a tangent there, forgive me, but that is the energy of um, Scorpio. The moon's very connected to relationships because, you know, relationships these days are based on emotion and the moon is an emotional planet. It rules emotions. In, a, in simplicity, it rules emotions. So this relational upheaval coming from the opposition to Uranus could be felt um, at this time in intimate relationships. We might um, desire relational or domestic or place of living freedom because the moon is our home and it's our tribe and it's where we feel most comfortable. Uranus in, as a part of this full moon might be shaking us out of a rut with those things. If we're in a relationship rut or a, a rut with where we're living or a rut with our domestic circumstances, Uranus might go, time to get out of that situation. Here's an event that's going to really sh uh, shake it up for you. So generally, that is another thing that might um, be felt energetically through this full moon. And of course, mood swings could be another thing. We already find that full moons are highly sensitized times for our emotions. Uh, ask anyone who works in an ER department or a, a mental institution or a teacher of young children. <laughs> they will tell you that things get a bit hairy around the time of the new moon, full moon rather when the moon's emotional impact is at its peak. Ask any werewolf, you know, it's, <laughs> it's what occurs. So we can find that with this opposition to Uranus, the erraticism, the sudden unexpected volatility of Uranus in opposition to the moon can bring on this um, emotional sensitivity and uh, moodiness more so than even the usual full moon would especially when it's in a sign like Scorpio which is very deep and intense anyway everything that is felt by Scorpio is felt to the extreme so hang on to your hats this is such an interesting full moon now then after this opposition and the, uh, with Uranus and the conjunction of the Sun with Uranus, we move to explore these Saturn squares that are part of this. So Saturn square Sun, well it can be very difficult under this energy to achieve ego gratification because the Sun wants to satisfy our ego needs and that's okay. Ego is not a dirty word, that's an old Australian song, um, but it isn't. It isn't a dirty word. We all need ego. If we did not have ego we would be puddles of nothing, you know, we, we would not survive on earth without ego. So it's when ego gets overblown that things become a bit nasty. But our ego gratification, that sense of I am fulfilling myself on this planet, blocked by Saturn with a square to the sun. So not so nice. It's hard to manifest our goals. It's hard to manifest our dreams. So in the intro to this piece, I said that we are having this full moon and we might find it easy to manifest our dreams because of the Neptune influence, which can be very highly manifesting, but yet it won't manifest in the way we expect because Saturn's blocking it, Saturn's holding it back, Saturn's stopping those dreams and goals from becoming a reality. So we get a manifestation, but it's a bit warped, it's a bit skewed from what we would, um, we would expect and hope for. We can feel quite pessimistic about the things that the sun rules under this energy of a, a square from Saturn. So if you're a Pisces rising like me, the sun rules your sixth house. Sixth house is work. And we might be pessimistic about work. Oh, my work is just going crap at the moment. I'm not getting enough clients. And um, all my employees are, uh, you know, being obnoxious. And um, or sixth house is, is health. You know, we might feel... Uh, pessimistic about our health and our well-being or our exercise routine or our diet or our daily work or you know daily life and how we run our, our schedule um, all those things can feel really meh under this energy so what does the Sun rule in your chart look at where Leo is what sign Leo sits in and what that house is all about that's where you might be feeling a bit pessimistic um, because of the square to the Sun from Saturn Saturn's sun squares can give us a lot more duties and responsibilities than we might otherwise have. So another factor that might play into this full moon, we might find that we're just super, super busy um, with tasks that aren't the joyful variety. You know, we're having to run here and run there and do this and do that because it is a responsibility that we have. So some people cope very well with that. Some people can't really handle much more on their plate because they've already got a lot there. 
So to be forewarned is forearmed. You might have to be juggling a few things and you might feel a bit burdened. We all might feel a bit burdened under this energy as well, a bit discouraged, a bit sad, and at worst case scenario, feeling a bit isolated from others. So you know, have some strategies in place. If I'm feeling this way, who can I reach out to and connect with? Who can I, who can I call? Who can I text? Who, you know, what can I do for myself to help me feel better? Have some strategies because not only is the sun getting a nasty square from Saturn, but we also have the moon getting a nasty square from Saturn. And this is in some ways even worse. Sorry to put the, the blanket of negativity on this, but when we have Saturn moon squares like this, it's a feeling, it's an energy of depression and sadness. And again, isolation because what's the moon? It's our emotions, it's our feelings and here is Saturn blocking, restricting, holding back, saying, hang on, I'm going to just put a brick wall in front of you with your emotions there. So we can have difficulty connecting with others uh, under this energy. We feel resentful. We feel bitter, perhaps, um, under this, this energy. We feel heavily criticized by others, even if we've not been criticized. You know, we feel like just the energy of someone is, they're against me. I just know it. You know, that that. It's not an energy of reading into things, but just that feeling, that inner knowing of somebody's condemnation of you. Saturn is to criticize. The moon is your emotional sensitivity. If you are in a codependent style of relationship, expect to feel pressurized because of this square. And if you're in just a normal relationship that's not codependent in style, then you know there could be this sort of an energy of rejection or coolness or distance between partners. So relationships, as I've already said, can suffer because of, of this energy. And this is, remember, um, Scorpio has this connection to the eighth house of deep intimacy where we might be f experiencing coolness in our intimate life or distance in our intimate life or pressure in our intimate life from this particular transit of sun, um, square, Saturn, square, moon. Now, just a word on what Pluto retrograde is all about. Pluto is usually retrograde for about half the year, so it's not an uncommon energy. It's not an unfamiliar energy. I'm not too panicked about this Pluto turning retrograde, but it is certainly worth mentioning. Um, half the population have Pluto retrograde in their natal chart anyway, but it's about going inward. So when Pluto goes retrograde on the same day as the full moon in Scorpio, and keep in mind, Pluto is a modern ruler of the sign of Scorpio, we will be not forced, but will be inspired, let's say, to go inward, to turn our energies and our focus to look inward at our deep psychic issues and problems. So if we're feeling, let's say, a bit lonely and isolated because of all that's going on here, we might start to look inward when Pluto goes retrograde and say, okay, well, why am I feeling so heavy and so lonely? Is this realistic? Let's shine a light. Let's do some therapy. Let, that's what Pluto's all about, therapy. Let's do some therapy on these feelings. Why are they there? And how can I consciously work with them to heal those feelings of loneliness that bubble up in me? It is a great opportunity, Pluto retrograde. I like it because it's giving us the chance to heal the hidden corners of our psyche, you know, the cobwebs down there in the basement. Um, it's giving us the chance to investigate what we're kind of hiding and keeping out of sight from everybody else and sometimes from ourselves as well. And it's giving us the chance to transform those things by shining a light. We turn our attention inward to our inner self, we shine a light on those things, highlight them, and transform them, transmute them, clean out the cobwebs out of the basement, so to speak. So that I see Pluto going retrograde as being a positive component of this whole full moon experience. And certainly, I also see that these squares occurring from Saturn that I've just spoken about that are going to be kind of harsh are going to be helped by the fact that Pluto is going to turn retrograde and we're going to start looking at where this is all coming from. Because some people who are, you know, healthy and evolved and high vibrational people, they can have a square that's transcended their chart, so to speak. They, they might have a square from the moon to Saturn and, uh, you know, they barely notice it, you know. Oh, it might mean I've got to restructure my home life a bit more. So what? That's, I can handle that. No worries. Um, and they don't go into the loneliness because they've learned to transcend it. That's what we really want to all 
aim for to be like that to sort of go beyond the heavy shadow energies that come with some of these energetic placements and Pluto is going to help us do that Pluto is going to help us go inward and look at ways we can transform and transcend the difficulties that are brought up for us through this square so I see this as a positive thing that we can work with to better our souls and our life journey now if you've enjoyed this breakdown of what is happening in the chart of this week's super moon in Scorpio then you might like to join me and my patreon community as we explore some of the energetic ceremonies that we can use to um, get the most out of the energy of this full moon and we also explore how this full moon is going to affect each sign in the horoscope so I give a forecast for each sign and a breakdown of how we can use these energies in our life for my patreon community it's only five dollars a month if you want to join at that level then head on over the links in the description below and thanks for joining us for this full moon breakdown here on YouTube Take a deep breath. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Hang on to that roller coaster railing. We are about to <laughs> go in opposition to the moon. Uh, sorry. Um, we are having this opposition. And thank you for joining us. If you ha uh, and thanks for joining us for this new. Uh, you know, integrity. Mm -mm. This is, um, no. I said this for uh, those 